What's going on, everybody? What's happening? It's the Tiki and Terry Show on this Friday. It's 10 3 on the fan. What is good? Tiki is my goal today to save everybody a lot of unnecessary stress because... Mm, how so? I'm hearing all day and I'm hearing all night, obviously reacting to the comments by Mr. Hal Steinbrenner on the New York Post podcast here, right? I, I Listen, <laughs> we can scream about this forever. Uh, we can discuss this and dissect this forever. It will be easier for your health and your sanity the quicker you realize that we, we, wanted more than hell, the better. Because we can dissect these comments till the, the cows come home. We can wonder why he continues to give extension after extension to Cashman. We can sit here and say, well, why is this guy still here? Why is it eating this contract? What's going on here? What about that? The bottom line is this, and you just need to accept it. We want the Yankees, we are possessed, Yankee fans, are more possessed and driven uh, for the Yankees to win the World Series than the owner. You got to deal with it. Yeah, so let me, before I respond to that, let me ask you, why is that a problem? Because the roster is what the roster is. So the only way it's a problem if is if at the deadline you need what let's say an arm, a relief arm, and he's just like, yeah, you know what? We we were already spending two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's not that important. Yeah, we're good. We had a good season. We're gonna win ninety five games. You'll probably get hurt anyway because that's usually what happens <laughs> sure. when we acquire guys but, at the deadline. But keep going. That's who Cash brings in. So if he if he takes that philosophy, yep. If the, so, if you're what you're intimating is that the fan wants it more than how, and how is not gonna do what it takes to put a championship caliber team when when he can when he needs to maybe spend. A little coin here or there. He's not going to do that. Then I have a problem. If if that's what you're suggesting, then I have a problem. Well, I'm not suggesting. I'm saying it. But here's what I think: How is actually saying? He's saying I want to win a championship. I just don't want to be so obsessed like my father because Heyman was talking about the George yep. Steinbrenner. Yep. Yep. And we'll get the audio here in a second so you can hear it if you have not heard it. Again, it was on the New York Post podcast. Heyman was basically trying to compare George's philosophy to Hal's philosophy about not winning a World Series and then the season is a failure. And Hal was kind of just, oh, you know, it's not really a failure and you hear it in a second. Not really a failure. We want to win the World Series, but if we don't, I'm not going to say the regular season is not a failure. So he's he was really talking around himself. But what I get from that is that he doesn't want to be his dad. He doesn't want to be so visceral mm -hmm. about everything that there are highs with the fans and then naders with the fans. And then sometimes they kind of like you but kind of hate you. He, he doesn't want that. He just wants to be, you know, status quo, flat. Easy. I'm just the owner. We're trying to win a championship. Yeah, very different presentation. I would very, agree with that. No, that I, I that's long ago that's accepted what, that. That's fine. That that's, doesn't bother me. That's what I think he's trying to do. I don't think he doesn't want it any less. I think he's just trying well, not to be the story. Okay, th th where I would push back on, if you wanted to, uh, personality aside, mm -hmm. because if he tried to be his dad, it, he he would bomb in terms of what he projects yeah, publicly. Any, anybody, because, would. anybody would, because George was one of a kind, right? Exa oh, God, yeah. George, all the good, all the bad, all the craziness. All I mean, George was George, and you, you can't replicate that if you try. You might be able to put on an act for a month or two, but, I mean, George's <laughs> volatility, and, and George is just, George is George. So, yeah, Hal probably grew up around that, or did grow up around that, and he's like, well... You know, that's not necessarily my temperament, and, and you know, that that's fine. I, I think that, listen, people have long ago, maybe some are still, I think it's ridiculous, you're wasting time. I think some were, were, were for a long time, clamoring for that George-like presentation. That's not my point. He doesn't have to be like his dad, that bombastic, crazy, you know, lunatic who was emotionally unpredictable. I'm, I'm not asking for that. that. What we are asking for, okay, and... I've stopped as well because I've come to the realization that this is not how he's built. When I say that he doesn't want it as much as his dad, uh, and we as fans want it more than Hal, what that means is Hal is not willing to make mistakes go away hmm. uh, by buying by, by buying people out. I know Hicks had a pretty good night last night, but Hicks has been an example forever. Donaldson's the other one. We're going to get to a point the next year or two where, trust me, we're talking about Giancarlo Stanton, four years to go. Why is Stanton still here? Just get rid of him. You're holding the kid back. You can't get this free agent because Stanton's here and he's blocking a spot. He's always hurt. He just accepts that. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest difference. He, he accepts it yesterday. 
He accepts it today. He'll accept it tomorrow. He will never change with yeah. that regard. Now, he does a lot for the Yankees. Don't get me wrong. He spends a lot of money. The difference is Pops was possessed. He's not. Yeah, and so deal with it. And we're gonna you're gonna hear this in t- in two seconds. I promise. He's not talking about that, but the undercurrent of what he's saying is exactly that. Right? He he's he doesn't want to waste the resource on the Hickses of the world, the Donaldsons of the world, even though it's probably best for the team. George Wood. Oh yes. And so here is. Hal Steinbrenner with um, uh, uh, John uh, Heyman Heyman on the New York Post podcast when asked specifically about failing by not winning the World Series. I've always always said our ultimate goal is to win a world championship. And if that doesn't happen, then we have failed in that goal. But no, I am not going to look at the season and say it it was a failure. I'm not going to look at last year and look at the amount of games we won and say it was a failure that we won a division series. I'm not going to say that's a failure. But in our ultimate goal, we clearly failed. Our ultimate goal every year is to win a world championship. And that's what we try to put a team together. And my family puts a lot of resources, you know, every year. I think we got a pretty good track record of trying to accomplish that. And if we don't accomplish that, then we did fail on that goal. Hmm. So here's what? so, so <laughs> exactly. Wait, I think I'm a little more confused than I was. To, actually, I wasn't confused at all to start the show. Now I'm a little confused. Now, what are you saying? What? We're not failing, but it is a failure. But we put resources. But the, the, what he's actually saying is that I am not going to be rash and waste resources just because I know it's not working. George, if if something wasn't working, he'd say, you know what? It's done. Get him out of here. Yeah. Well, we're going to start. We're going to try it again. I think the difference is the errors are different. And this is why you can't compare George Steinbrenner's tenure at, with the Yankees, even though I think we we romanticize some of those early years. Oh, there's no question we do. Right? And, there's uh, no question. And we kind of obscure the bad. Yep. And there was a lot bad a with lot. George. It's, if you live through it like years. I did. There's a lot of years. Yep. Um, but, My whole childhood sucked. But, but, Honestly. But, but, but the reality is... In 2023, really going back to 20, you know, a couple, maybe five or six years ago, it's really hard to buy the championship. There's been one team that's done it, and that's the Dodgers, and it didn't even happen with the players that they bought, right? They bought this team in 2015 that had 300 and whatever it was, maybe just under a $300 million payroll. They didn't win the World Series for five years, right? And you would even say it was kind of flawed because it was the pandemic World Series. Yep. But w- whatever, it took some time, and most of those guys that they paid were gone. So buying a championship is hard because the Rays can put out a consistent winner, even though they lost the series against the Mets, good job Mets, um, with a $75 million payroll. Mm -hmm. Teams like the Padres can dabble a little bit and try to spend money, and then they back away and like, I don't know, we're not going to spend any money. I don't know if they're they're backing away anymore. They can't They back, in the past they've done that twice, but I I think they're all in for a while. But there are teams that can do it without, you know, Spending three hundred million dollars, the Astros—they've done it mostly homegrown. Um, for the Orioles time. will be one of those teams, the and then they'll have well. to accent the roster. Right. But they've got some young kids. But who they're going to accent their roster by maybe having one, yeah, yeah, that's my point. Fifty sure. million yeah. dollar contract, yes. Right? yes. And so it's just you just can't buy it like you used to. Well, listen, then they'll charge the prices that you charge. That's mm-hmm. simple. Mm-hmm. You don't want us to demand. And by the way, I was going to say you don't want us to de- demand a high payroll. It is a high payroll. That's not the beef. Listen, I, I think what makes this a very complex, anytime it's about Hal and the Yankees and George and success and expectations, and we're just reacting to what Hal said yesterday, otherwise we wouldn't be bringing this up on the show, because the Yankees start to play well. The Yankees start to cook, and that is good to see. Nestor, awesome. Judge locked in. Big win. But a very complex, very unique evaluation, because take it, the, bottom, the bottom line is that we're talking about one of the most... Uh, both loved and loathed, loathed, it's mm-hmm. hard to say, loathed, yeah, <laughs> figures in all the sport in George. Yes. I mean, it is a complex analysis, right? So he he's trying to, on some level, live up to that. And he's, his personality is benign, which is fine. They haven't won. Um, really, George is one of the titans in terms of visibility uh, and accomplishment in the history of owners. There's just no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Branch Rickey, you've got Jackie Robinson, you've got the Don. Like, there's a few. George is on that. He really is. So, I don't think Hal's ever going to win this battle. I, I don't think he's ever going to win a PR battle. I don't know that he necessarily cares. And, you know, I, I think if you're a Yankee fan, I think you need to recalibrate, not what you hope will happen, 
but what you expect will happen financially. You just do a little bit. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, well, you got to match what the fans want, but you can't go as far as the fans sometimes. I think that's where Hal's mindset is. Okay. 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney on the fan inside of our Town Fair Tire Studio. Uh, friends of Town Fair, remind you that you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. No Buddy, real quick, how was Joe B yesterday? Good. Joe's the best. Joe. Dude. You know Joe's the best. I heard you guys for a couple minutes sounded good. Pulled yeah. Hoff in. You guys were having a good time. So always great to have Joe B in the house. Yeah, we got to scream at Buck because he sat being Oh, uh, You know what? I purposely checked. the. I had a couple of things to do before I was able to finally play golf yesterday. And I checked the Mets lineup. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. I know you guys did it. Worked it worked out. I know, I, I, I know it did. But come on. Mm-hmm. That, is, that is weak. But still a good win. All right, let's get to Lou. First up, a story on the fan. Lou, what's cooking, buddy? How are you? Hey, how was your golfing? Good? Uh, uh, interesting. I'll <laughs> leave it on that. what side you're talking about. <laughs> and, yeah, interesting. <laughs> now, listen, going to the to the ownership of the Yankees, okay? First of all, I no longer take my family to the stadium. It's too expensive, okay? Mm-hmm. So we, we demand the best, okay? Now, how the problem with him is it's about business. The, uh, the, the father... Like you said, it didn't, he didn't care what it takes to to spend and winning. Because if you notice, he was the type of guy, if you can't beat him, you know, join him. In other words, if, if Reggie Jackson went hitting against the Yankees well, that player is coming to the Yankees. Bryce Harper, who was a Yankee fan, was never even introduced to the Yankees. Or even they, they didn't talk to him about, you know, he was a free agent. George would have never allowed that. that he'd be... He'll be, he'll, he'll be a Yankee. But anyway, even with Volpe, they, they, the people that are running the Yankees right now, okay, they don't know how to take care of players. Volpe right now has the same same identical stats as Joey Gallo. He, I think he's about close to be leading the league in, in strikeout. A guy that should be, if I was the, the GM, I'd say, listen, you, I want you to just steal bases, be aggressive, and make contact. That's what the problem with this what the Yankees are. What do you? What, what is your opinion about what I just said? Well, I mean, there's 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 a lot to unpack there. I, I think I, I understand that the price is the first thing you said. The prices are are exorbitant, and I, I respect it. I get it. Uh, if you can't go, you can't go. And I I feel bad that so many good people have been priced out of the game. I I'm sure that I would still love baseball the the way that I do if I if I didn't go to Yankee and Shea Stadium as much as I did as a kid. But you know, when you go to the ballpark. You know, I don't mean 30, 40 times. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Nobody has time for that. You go to six, seven games a year. It doesn't matter where you sit. You just see the field. You see these these titans on the field, these heroes that you want to replicate. And, you know, you want to emulate their swings in the streets, play a wiffle ball. That just, that helps blossom the love. So, I, I hate that, you know, so many people can't do it. Listen, I, I think that, look at it. If you're unclear about how. I would present it this way about like, and what I mean, when I say unclear, I mean, if you're still hoping that he becomes his dad a little, not in personality, but in spending, whatever, right? Look at it this way. The Yankees were absolutely pitiful Mm -hmm. against the Guardians and against the Astros offensively. Last year. Just wretched. What was the repercussion? A four-year extension for the GM. Nothing else needs to be said. Mm-hmm. That's You can scream all you want. Brian Cashman got rewarded for that team. Tells you all you need to know. Uh, let me get Steve in Stanford, Connecticut. What's happening, Stevie? How you doing? What's up, Steve? Uh, what you have to understand is Hal Steinbrenner is a businessman, not a sportsman. And so when you talk about Cashman getting attention because as a business, he's accomplishing what Steinbrenner wants, what Hal wants. The place has 40,000 people in there every night. They're selling tickets higher than any other team. They sell $20 beers. They sell lots of souvenirs, lots of merchandise. As a business, Cashman has succeeded mightily. As a sportsman, maybe not so much. But that's not Hal's objective. Hal's objective is the value of the franchise, which is the highest, I think, in the world. His objective is the bottom line, how much money comes in, and winning a championship Maybe it'll add a couple of bucks, but not enough to justify how much he'd have to spend extra to get a championship. It's diminishing returns. He can spend another $50 million and maybe win a championship, but that won't translate to $50 million more in revenue. 
And as a businessman, it makes perfectly good sense. Oh, I think it Why would. I think it definitely money? would. It would double it. Oh, if the Yankees were Come in the on. World Series? At, at, no. Steve. No, sir. Steve. I don't see how much money, How much more money can you get. I'm going to tell you, Steve. It, very simply. Every day. Yeah. No. Yes. The place is sold out for every game. No, no, it's not. Top dollar for tickets. It's not sold out every game, Steve. Top... Steve, I was there two weeks ago. Uh, it's, Steve. It's, uh, Steve. You, you can't just throw things out. I mean, I, lo- I love the, the direction, and, mm-hmm. and thanks for the call, buddy. But, I mean, I was there. Granted, it was the A's. There was 19,000 people there. It was a Tuesday night. Admit, it wasn't a Friday, Saturday. I got it. I wasn't a marquee opponent. That's sold out every game like it was with, with Bernie and Jeets and Tino and Moe and Pettit and those boys. It's just not. I mean, the crowds were really good. Yeah, of course. But here's how you make the money, whether it's 50, throw out any arbitrary money. Let's say you spend $75 million more. Steve's point, Teak, was... It's not worth it because you're not going to make that money back. Well, no, you are on the back end residually because now you can justify more for the suites, mm-hmm. more for the advertising rate, a little more for the ticket, a little more for the beer. If you win, you can up everything. Nobody flinches. And even if the 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 casual, meaning the non-Yankee fan, is 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 not particularly interested in the Yankees, if you're in the World Series, you're gonna garner interest from somebody. Yes. Right. Or you might somebody might fall in love with the Aaron Judge, and all of a sudden that somebody, which is somebody times you know ten thousand or fifty thousand, are going to buy a jersey. Right. So it, it, it be, there's there is a value to visibility in the a sports ultimate game. It, it just there's fact of that. We we just know that that's the truth. Not to mention the additional revenue that comes from being broadcast for long. Like it, there is a lot that goes into winning the international awards. market, internet, all that stuff. Uh, that's you. really probably more of it. Forget the you know the casual American baseball fan. Yeah. It's the it's the international fan that now is paying attention to a champion or, or a potential champion that adds significant value. You can't you can't even really put a number on it because it's theoretical until it happens. But yeah. I think that. There's certainly value in winning a championship. Otherwise, you know, every team would just be like, oh, let's just work on the bottom line. Let's not pay you guys too much money. No, you can't do that. I'll tell you what, I don't have the exact number, and I, maybe I can find that somewhere, but the Yankees, what they added to their bottom line revenue with Hideki Matsui. Now, the reason I, 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 I think I can't prove this, I can't text Hideki Matsui and get the answer. Uh, I wish I could, but I'm pretty sure that the reason he signed with the Yankees is because the Yankees were just kicking the crap out of everybody with the championships, and it was great. It was greatly appealing to him. So he comes here. Before you know, it, you have Japanese advertising splashed everywhere, and you know now. Listen, I, I, I don't know. I mean, is Shohei Otani? Does he want to play? If the Yankees had won three championships in the last six years. I'm pretty sure we'd all be saying Otani's come to the Yankees. Yeah. There's no doubt. Number one, because George would pay him, if, you know, if he was still here. And number two, you know, we're, we're overflowing with championships. He wants to be a part of that before he retires. He's won nothing. And then, boom, you, exponentially, you just crush the revenue with the influence of the Japanese dollar here. That's right. It That's is a, what it is. That is a, it's a huge part of the business of the game. Yes, sir.